I think that the number one issue in the 7th Congressional District is exactly the number one issue for my parents' generation, uh, me growing up in the 7th Congressional District, and that's job creation. It hasn't changed. Uh, if anything, we never prospered during the 90s when the rest of the world was experiencing a boom. We in the 7th Congressional District weren't. Um, so job creation has to be our number one priority. And in Congress, I would work tirelessly um, to implement a job plan that includes four things. I think we have to invest in infrastructure, um, uh, especially in the rural areas, but also in the urban areas. I mean, the fact that Birmingham doesn't have a mass transit puts us so far behind other big metropolitan cities. The fact that uh, the Black Belt has basic water and sewer infrastructure needs uh, means that they can't compete for industries, private sector industries, until that's fixed. I mean, my parents, until recently, um, didn't have, you know, rural broadband. They were on dial-up until very, very recently. Um, so the reality is that we have to invest in our infrastructure, and investment in our infrastructure has started already. I mean, the stimulus plan did putting, I want to say, 300 uh, million dollars to the state of Alabama that was given to the Department of Transportation to disperse out uh, to projects and red, shovel ready projects in the state of Alabama. And the bottleneck in, in Montgomery has not let that trickle down to lots of the smaller communities in, in the 7th Congressional District. So that's something we can start trying to do now um, is uh, trying to get some of that money for infrastructure improvement which would not only help build better roads, bridges, water and sewer systems, but also hire people. Um, the second investment is investment in human capital. I think that we have to um, truly invest in workforce development. Um, I think that the best um, business development plan is a good education, and it has to be not just public school education, but but you know technical and career training. Um, I don't know about you, but when I was in high school, we had shop, and we had we had uh, we really had the gamut of educational experience because not everybody will want to go to college, but everyone will need to be able to provide for their families, um, and so. Investment in human capital would be the second thing that I would work on. Um, the third thing is investment in our small businesses. The 7th Congressional District, I think the heartbeat of the 7th Congressional District are small businesses. And I'm talking about barber shops, beauty shops. I'm talking about hardworking people who sell Mary Kay out of their home. I'm talking about small businesses, internet businesses that people are starting at their within their homes to help um, um, create uh, um, internet commerce and need to be encouraged. Um, so giving tax incentives for small uh, businesses, I think, well, I know, will be a big priority for me in Washington. And getting tax credits to those uh, small businesses that actually are hiring, uh, again, will be a big priority. So investing in our small businesses. Um, the fourth investment, I think, is definitely a longer term investment, but it's investment in technology. I am encouraged by uh, the investment in alternative energy sources that are going on in the Black Belt and in the 7th Congressional District that uh, center around uh, biofuel being created from wood chip, wood waste. I mean, we, we are rich uh, in the 7th Congressional District in timber. And to be able to take those wood chips and, and to, to be able to create biofuel alternative energy sources that will decrease our dependency on big oil, I mean, it's, it's prime. Is it a long-term investment? Yes. But we've got to start somewhere. Um, and I believe that, that uh, being able to provide federal dollars to, to create uh, and encourage that kind of investment in, in the 7th Congressional District is a long-term future plan, but is one that I would encourage and, and, and try to find federal dollars to, uh, to, uh, to bring about. At the end of the day, voters need to look at who can credibly bring home job creation. And I, for 15 years of my life, have been working in finance and in economic development and in infrastructure improvement, bringing home um, 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 uh, industries, attracting industries, better uh, infrastructure and creating jobs. So, I, you know, I am convinced as we walk up and move around the 7th Congressional District that people are excited about our candidacy because of that. They see a, lo a local girl 
done good, but who's come back home with an expertise that is right up the alley of what we need in Washington. Uh, job creation and finance and, and committed to bringing um, opportunities and resources back home that will, that will help our children reach their full potential, whatever that is, college, career and technical development. Um, so I think that that, that that is the number one priority of this campaign and would be of any administration of mine. So the high poverty level in the 7th District, job creation is, is going to be the way to get out there. Absolutely. Job creation and better educational opportunities. Mm -hmm. I think it kind of goes hand in hand. Um, I am, no one is more alarmed by the growing uh, unemployment rates in the uh, 7th Congressional District than I am. Um, it saddens me to, to um, go around this district and meet uh, little children who, at the age of nine and ten, their eyes, their their limit, they they've limited themselves and what they can do and their prospects at the at the age of nine. It, it's unacceptable. It really is unacceptable. And uh, I can tell you that at nine years old, I told you what I was doing at nine years old. I I was reading books and seeing Statue of Liberty. I didn't know how I was going to get there, but I knew in my heart of hearts that I would. And I, as I move around the district, while there are many, many children that are being educated, there are a whole host of public schools that need better teachers, better resources. The teachers need better resources. We need to give the teachers the tools that they need and let them teach. Um, we have to um, prepare our classrooms to be 21st century classrooms, to be able to compete for 21st century jobs. And that's not just rhetoric, that's the reality that we are not going to be able to compete with the, um, the, the jobs that are northern jobs, let alone jobs that, um, that, that are going to go overseas mm -hmm. because our children are not ready.